uh, it's a great topic and we could imagine in all the relationship communication plays a key role so uh, with that we would although we are very uh, very special group today and before we start our session because we are going to go more in the detail of the aspect of communication so communication we all know it's always two way communication one way communication is not appreciated anywhere so rather than i do this session one way communication i would like to make it two way communication does it sound okay Anthony, Rino, Martina. Yes. No. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for communicating. So uh, I would love to share my screen. And uh, before we start, let's do some ice breaking storytelling because we all have brought up with the storytelling. So I would love to you all participant to share in one minute, what is, share with us that what is the highest point in your life? And whoever, so one, so in communication, one is a conveyor of the message and other is a receiver of the message. So whoever is going to share the story are going to share their story and who is going to be listening to the story would find out the one value which individual shared from the story. One value which touched me from the story. So who would like to volunteer? highest point in your life one minute anyone you want me to start you want me to share yes uh it, it's 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 hard to think of just the one thing. There's so many beautiful things that have happened. So it's like my my brain is uh, is going. Wait a minute. Do I do this or do I talk about that? Anyway, I think it would be good if you started. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, I have a one minute and let me start my story. So when I was uh, when I was growing up, one day. I had, I found out in my, in my closet, I found, I have so many clothes, which are very nice clothes and beautiful clothes, uh, but I couldn't wear it all. And I could realize that this is, this could be of a better use of someone. And so I collected all those clothes and I was walking uh, like you know I was walking to the place because I come from India so I was walking to the place which is very close to my father uh, father's shop so while I was walking I saw a lot of kids and and rather than I just find and give it to some like goodwill sort of a shop I just sat on uh, on a rock and I asked all the because in India it's very easy so I was like you know I collected all those kids and I said why why don't you uh, come and I will share with you something what I have beautiful and then I opened my my bag and I started sharing my those clothes with them and what the joy I have seen in their eyes it's just invaluable and that was the highest satisfaction which I have, I have received and it has impacted on my being to be kind and to be generous is so much fulfilling and it gives you so much contentment. So this is a high point in my life. So 
now as you i shared my story which one virtue or value did you take from the story thank you sister elizabeth anyone else I think the, just the, the giving part you you gave right is that you 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 yeah you gave yeah. Mm -hmm. and um, my next question to you is how do you feel when how did you felt when I was sharing my story you saw my gesture or if you are just listening to me what did you feel when you were listening to me if you have not seen me on the screen. If you are not looking at the screen and you are just listening, what feeling it has left when you are listening to the story? Joy. Thank you, Sister Elizabeth. And what it has brought, what feeling it has brought out from within us, that is an impact which has been left with this communication. So, and we tell stories, we share our feelings, we communicate on different topics with so many people. And what we are living is the impact. So I will share my next slide. And in that next slide, we're going to see the whole process which, which happens in the communication. So when I was sharing my story, and this is where I would, if you would participate, it would be more fun because it is not like we are teaching. I'm not here to teach you something. I'm just trying to see that whatever, whatever concept, whatever understanding I have about this communication with impact, is it making sense to you? So if you will not respond to me, I won't know. So it would be nice if you can, we, we, it can be both the side. So what happened when I was sharing my story, my intent was to communicate with you the joy and the impression it has left on my life with that small particular act. So that was my intent to communicate with. So I conveyed that message through the story. And through the story, when I asked your feedback, then you were so kind to give me your feedback. And that's how I know that what I was conveying has been received with the same intent, with the same feeling, and with the intention what I wanted to deliver in my message. Does it make sense to you? Does it make sense? Yeah. And I, now I want you to analyze me. And I want you to give me feedback that what I could have done better or did you get my message clean and clear what I wanted to convey? Mega was going to say something. Yes, Mega. Yeah, I was just going to say, yes, it was clear when we were communicating. Definitely, because see in all, and this is communication I have like, we all know, and we try to communicate as best and as impactful we can. But sometimes there are misunderstandings. Sometimes people just maybe not taking in that intent what we are intended to deliver. But whether it may be your personal relationship or professional relationship, or you are, if you are serving the community, or if you are a leader, if you are a politician, the, it is so important 
how we communicate. And I'm not going to give you some like those sessions which we have studied in our school and colleges about the communication. But main thing is who is communicating, communicator. So rather than we focus on the story, rather than we focus on the content, because most of the time we become so conscious about the content that we become a content conscious rather than self-conscious and self-awareness conscious. So in, uh, in because I, I can tell you my own personal story. When I moved from India to US, I, you all know that uh, this English is not my first language and uh, I never ever gave any session in English. I wasn't, my, my English wasn't that great. So I had that, that feeling that how am I going to serve this community if I don't have, I don't know better English. So what happened, I had one thing which has benefited me is that my confidence. And that confidence came from one important, I would say value and virtue, which I'm gifted with, and that is my intention. I know my intention and I knew that what I want to convey. And when my intention was so pure, the universe, we could say the universe has provided me initially with such a welcoming, such an understanding and and such a beautiful souls, they came into, at that point of my life, in my life, which has helped me to overcome that hesitation that I, and that even that thought that I don't know how to deliver in this class in perfect English. So first of all, that is what is main important for the communication with impact is know yourself. When I know myself and I have a clarity about my own inner self, it gives me that power which just comes from within that if I want to communicate this message, I can. But what happens sometimes still, even though our intent, somebody would say, oh, my intention was so clear, but I, it still, I don't know why they don't understand me. They don't just get what I want to say. So there is a one, uh, it, uh, George Bernard Shaw, he has shared a beautiful, this uh, quote, that the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Uh, when we read this uh, quote, would you like to comment on this? What do you think? I would love to know your input about this quote. What do you think about that? The single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. What does it mean to you? Anybody? Anyone? I think so, for me, it so, means that sorry. when you assume that the message that you were trying to communicate has been received exactly the way you were trying to communicate. Exactly. And this is this happens a lot when we are in the environment uh, where, where there is so much diversity, right? We are in the country which with so much diversity, everybody's belief system is different. Everybody's way of communication is different. Everyone's way of understanding the words and the meaning of the words are different. Still, I find sometimes myself not understanding the meaning because my friends, they I'm not from 
US, I'm not brought up here. So I don't know in culture. So, so many terms they use. So my friends, they crack jokes and all, and I don't get it. I'll tell you one funny thing. <laughs> Yesterday only, because I recall it because just recently I shared with someone. So a few days back, I met uh, uh, my friend and she was from Wyoming. So I said, oh, where are you from? She said, oh, Wyoming. I said, wow, I have been to Wyoming. And we had, because Brahma Kumaris, we serve in a lot, uh, lot of states. So I said, oh, you know, I remember that in Casper, Wyoming, we, we were doing a exhibition. So means we were sharing our knowledge and we were sharing our meditation techniques to the Sioux community. So we, we just wanted to show our presence there. So we were there. And I just came from India and like maybe 20, 12 years back, I had no clue the what language they speak or what is a culture, but I was enthusiastic as Sister Elizabeth said, I said, no, I want to go. And I was standing there and I said like, uh, oh, you know, whenever you come to our uh, community, Brahma Kumaris community, we share with you the blessings, you know, positive quotes, affirmation, we call them blessing cards. So I was sharing with them a blessing card, everybody, whoever were coming to the booth. And uh, when uh, and what happened that one, one participant in that, uh, <clears throat> one participant in that booth, they, they said, oh, I don't want blessing. I said, okay. And then I just like, I said, okay, fine. And then that individual, they passed by, and they commented that she is a witch, witch or witch, whatever they say. And uh, and my my one of my colleagues who was serving with me there, and she said, "You know, Sister Vishali, what she said to you?" He said, "I said like, what did she say?" He said, "She she called you witch." I said, "So what?" He said, "Oh, I said, what does it mean?" He said, "It is not a good word." I said, it's okay, fine. So whatever was intention, whatever her intention was, it did not impact me the way she wanted to deliver the message. You understand that? Why? Because my innocence, my intention was so pure. And other thing is, I did not know the meaning of which. So it did not affect me. So we become so sensitive and everybody's sensitivity is different. And that's why in a, in a country when any political figure is giving any, any comments or a speech, you know, the whole nation gets into the rage, a whole nation gets into the movement. So there are so many leaders who has impacted the nation positively and so many leaders who has impacted the nation negatively, but who is eventually getting impacted is me. So although whoever is communicating whatever the message, eventually me individual, a being is getting impacted and I can choose how much I want to get impacted by any messages because the world is with so much information, we just cannot grasp everything or we just cannot take in everything because eventually the individual who is receiving the message is getting impacted. So communication with impact is also, I would say, I take it this way, that how much I allowed myself to get impacted. And another word for impacted is influence. How much am I getting influenced with the message is being delivered? Do I have a choice? And in next slide, I would like to share with you that because we were talking about that illusion, so what are the few points where we could say, I just want you to go through this slide and just observe the slide and let me know 
if you agree or disagree or if you have any thoughts about it. So when I am getting impacted by any message being delivered to me, what am I expecting out of it? And what I would call it a poor communication, what I do not want to be in the place or I want to upskill myself to be a better communicator. So the few of the things are, if somebody would like to read for me. I can do that. Do you want me to read the whole, whole, to read the yeah, whole list Yeah, down? go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay, Please. some general signs of poor communication include passive listening instead of active listening, shutting down, Letting things bottled up inside until you explode in anger or sadness, yelling or screaming, becoming physically or verbally abusive, dismissing other people's points of view, demonstrating passive aggressive behavior, not being clear about expectations, needs or wants, giving the silent treatment, interrupting. Thank you, Anthony. I really appreciate your participation. Mm -hmm. Now, in my next question, I would love to know that in present, right now at this moment of the time, if you would like to assess your own self, what one thing would you like to see yourself doing better? You don't have to share. But just observe these points and just, you know, because this is where this class is, whatever we offer here in Anubhuti, this is really helpful to have self-development every day, you know, bit by bit. It's a very beautiful song, which one of our friends sang bit by bit. So, and this is what I did when I was preparing for this presentation. I myself, I checked and that what do I have to improve? Am I giving a silent treatment? Am I interrupting? Am I not setting a clear expectation and needs? Now I want to ask you one thing. Did I set up a clear expectation from you when I was communicating with you? Did I do it correctly? You are my assessors. Yes. <laughs> And <laughs> you said, hey, today I would love for all of you, this is a participant or participatory, uh, uh, it's not a class, I'm not here as a teacher, so you were very clear. So thank you. So one part I, I passed, okay, I, <laughs> I score in one point. Okay, did I give any silent treatment? I don't think so because majority of the time I am talking, <laughs> right? So do you think so that I should not get a silent treatment? Oh, that's awesome. My yes. ears are ears are <laughs> open to listen. <laughs> huh? Great question. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. You shouldn't get the silent treatment either. That's why I'm trying to pipe up. So tell me to be quiet when you want me to be. Um, yeah. That, you know. yeah, um, Shanti, uh, by Shanti yeah, yeah, thank you, Claudia. <laughs> Claudia and from Vancouver. Yeah, Very thank interesting you. what you're uh, sharing because lately Vancouver is upside down. They look at you strange here, the Canadians, when you smile at them. I mean, it's it's changing radically here. Wow. I mean the no I mean the US Americans were always friendlier than the Canadians, so I love being in the States, but at the moment I live here and my son was born country, but it's very challenging. So I do, as they say, hang out mostly on the international UBC University of British Columbia campus because it has a completely different dynamics, energy, international students, international faculty members. And I can do better service there as well. So yeah, this is what's happening here. 
So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for, for, for your Thank you for your lovely presentation. Appreciate it. So, um, so uh, how can we develop a better communication skill? So first is a clarity of message. Next thing is a checking understanding. And that's what I was trying to do that I was checking that, okay, if whatever I'm communicating, am I, you are understanding the same intent and the message, what I'm trying to communicate. And then there is a turn of talking. It's always nice, right? That you get response and you get, it's, it makes you feel warm. It makes you feel, uh, you know, hard. So and that's, and that's where the active listening comes. <clears throat> and while we are communicating, there are a lot of method, non-verbal, verbal, and this body language and, like the whole class on communication when I was studying my MBA, there was, we had a full, uh, like, you know, one, one class on the one subject on communication. So, so using the right method, I will not go into that detail, but exactly we are going to see what is a real choosing the right method is. And then last, not but the least is self-awareness. So these are the great communication skills. So if we'll go a little bit in detail about it and we'll understand. So clarity of the message is realizing the significance, the power and the importance of a clear, concise communication. Have a substance, something which is meaningful and important to say. Know, know what you want to say before you start talking. Plan your communication with great intention. So now I would love to know that while, when you are on the receiving end, what were your intention to come for this class? Because then I will set my intention correct. What was your intention when you, are, you decided to come for the class? You wanted to learn something, you wanted to know something, or you want to check out whether this Vaishali is doing okay, or, or, or what? What's your intention? I, I think for me, one of the things that um, I think, you know, learning how to not only be authentic, myself and to be authentic to the other person and that sometimes my ego gets in the way or my fear gets in the way and so i i took i came here because i want to learn more i want to be able to communicate effectively and i'll take tools from you know this you know i i, I already have just, you know, what, what you've already spoken about, just to continue to move forward and just being authentic and driving the ego and the fear away by saying, oh, this is how I can say this. One of the biggest things that I, I you know, not a high point, but a learning point of communication is just being able to say to someone, gee, I don't know. I have to think about that. And it took me a long time to be able to say that and be okay with it like and i'm totally okay with that i can say that in a group of people it's like hey do you know this musician uh no i don't actually oh look great let me let me turn you on to him it's just like so if i'm authentic it's like this i i win i i win you know but the the the, the things that, that come in i'm repeating myself my ego sometimes or fear a lot of times like oh my god i don't want to tell them the truth like, what do they think of me as opposed to saying so i'm here because i want to i want to i want to have more tools and being authentic and, and communicating effectively like that so thank you for listening to that thank you so this is very important that again while i'm asking you this question i am checking myself that is this session is communication with impact whatever was my intention whatever was my message, it was it clear? And am I clear? And how do I know 
that it is clear, we will see that in our next point of the communication is checking the understanding. So Anthony, I'm so grateful to you that you have shared such a beautiful way that how you from just like, you know, half an hour, you shared such a great point with us that you have to come out of your fear and ego just to say, I don't know. So whatever has been, it, it helps to so see this, this things helps us. So when we are in the mode of that same intention of receiving and, and giving end, so communicator and, and whoever is receiving it, if we, our intention is good, then we create that safe space. And people like to open up and leave that ego and fear behind only if they feel safe. Do you agree? Absolutely, thank you. So creating that safe place is very important for the communicator. So in communication, the, our clarification involved that offering back to the speaker the essential meaning as understood by the listener and of what they have just said, thereby checking that listener's understanding is correct and resolving any areas of confusions and misunderstanding. So, and that is what I have been trying to do throughout the our last half an hour, that I wanted to make sure that we take our own time and we are both the way, we are understanding what the message is being conveyed. And if I do not respond, then I am becoming a silent responder. And that means I am not giving safe space to the communicator. Does it make sense? Always this one-way communication, it it really, how it is getting impacted to the communicator is like, I don't know whether they like me. I don't know whether they understand me. I don't know whether they would love to listen to me. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Isn't it? Does it make sense, right? Does it happen to you? When you are communicating and another person doesn't respond and doesn't give you any feedback, then would you understand that your message has been conveyed correctly? You know, that doesn't happen like that, especially like uh, you see in the family, you know, a, a mother is giving instruction to the kids again and again and again. Oh, you don't play with this. You don't, uh, you don't be on the phone all the time. You don't do this. You don't have to, you don't uh, play games when you are studying. And the response is the same. People don't change. There's why there is no change. Do parents complain about that too? Right? So this is a, one of my friends, she was sharing with me. Oh, Vishal, this is my, because her kids are in the, in the teenage, or uh, they are like, you know, they are into this age where there are a lot of changes and it becomes, you don't have to deal with it, we are fine. But all of a sudden you have to deal with this teenager issue. And she said, I don't know what to do. I just took her, uh, took his phone away and I am, I feel so bad that I have to be like this. You know? So it's so interesting that, and this is all communication. We want to do something because our words are not working. Because now what happened, the words have lost the impact. And the best way of communication is the words. But why it has lost the impact? Because the intention and the energy behind those words are having more impact than just mere the words or your sentences or your speech. Because people look at the intention behind the speech 
intention behind your statements, but not only the words. Do you agree? If somebody is saying, oh, I love you, you will just going to believe it blindly? No. Why? Because that energy should also flow. That pure intention should also come on the surface when we are communicating. So that would be great if you could also, I could also get the understanding that, oh, whatever am I being conveying to you, you are receiving in the same spirit. Now, <clears throat> so this, this is like, you know, taking a turn in talking, which I would appreciate if that happens today. First myth that if I tell them I have communicated. So I don't want that kind of a community. I don't want to be that kind of a facilitator where I assume that because I'm whatever I'm conveying, you are just getting it. And second myth is what I say is what people hear. And third myth is more is better. Can you please tell me which myth I'm living in? Can you share with me which myth am I living in? If I tell them I have communicated, whatever I say, that's what you have to hear. And more is better. What myth you believe that we do all the time? It so when it depends Sorry. to whom you're talking to, really, and in which culture. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because I'm European and I live in this culture and I will never get used to it. <laughs> uh, so, and I yeah. actually decided because my elderly mother's here and she's still alive. I'm the primary caregiver. I'm very busy with her right now. And actually, lately, I had some serious communication issues with the management of the home of the seniors home where she lives so yeah very challenging <laughs> but i decided already that i will return to europe at least part time because um to no avail like unfortunately even the vancouver bk family they do not communicate and it's very sad so they're very scattered and yeah, for me, it's a very clear decision that I will return to Europe. And I'm looking forward to my, my Dubai voyage this year. A long, long time I will be in India. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it really depends with which culture you're from, with whom you communicate, etc. Right? And so many factors. Yeah. Yeah, but the, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Claudia, for sharing your personal uh, opinion and feeling about it. But like, you know, uh, and this is a one thing we uh, we see, like, you know, most of the time, uh, I, I tell you the story of my current boss. <clears throat> he is, again, the culture difference is very common and when and he comes from a military background so when he conveys the message he conveys the message is this is the order this is how it is and whatever you say it's uh, or, uh, no this is the way it has to be so when the message was conveyed always conveyed like that means do you understand me as it I understand one thing, what you want from me, that's it. Rest all the things, it doesn't matter. So although his delivery, although his, uh, his intention, whatever it may be, but my focus as a responder, if my focus is what I want to take out of it, what in that message is for my benefit, if my focus is clear, it will be any communication I can turn from negative to positive. Because all the time, whatever is the message, if, even if it is a silent treatment, even if it is, and it all happens because we all are human beings, 
we do that too and we uh, we become a recipient of that treatment too so or we become also a participant of that sort of a communication process too so it is not that i am always correct so whatever i am communicating is the only way of a better communication so that is also one of the myth and whatever i tell them i have communicated but if i do not know as you said it's a cultural thing i am not open minded to understand their point of view i am like i am not open to for the discussion and then that's where the people get shut down so the my that's my homework which i have to do if i want to be more uh, more impactful in this and i'm more beneficial this whole communication become uh, more beneficial for myself if i want to make it because why do we communicate <clears throat> eventually we go deep down the bottom line there is something which helps me to grow helps me to understand better either maybe the concept idea project relationship anything communication is basically a tool to get us into the better understanding of others and ourselves and most of the time well let's come to our next top uh, next point is most most of the time where it lay, lacks is the active listening one of the most common complaint that we hear during this you do not listen to me or i am not being heard yes absolutely i agree 100% right yes so you you cannot truly <laughs> listen to any anyone and and do anything else at the same time and this is what happened and although uh, zoom has its own uh, advantages but the same way zoom has also may be have uh, <clears throat> i would say contributed more to be a distractive listeners do you agree we think we can do multitasking when we are listening to the session right not 100%, really 100% <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you're right. On the session. <laughs> no, people want to do multitasking when they are really? on the Zoom. Oh. oh, they want to. <clears throat> and uh, once, uh, like, I have learned that, that uh, if you are listening to someone or something which is for your own soul benefit, there is no way, there is nothing called multitasking. If you are doing something, you are missing something. If you are doing one thing, it means you are ignoring the other thing implicitly. Do you agree? We can only do one thing at a time. I think it's about when focusing. Even, focusing. Yeah. On one yeah because yeah. whenever, because whenever I I see myself that when I'm you know you, when you are that is why they say do not text and drive because you cannot keep your eyes on the road and text correct you can because that's where immediately you can see how much harm we can do ourselves if we lose our attention and that's what is our next uh, exercise if you i would have love if you would participate in this i have this exercise but if your cameras are off this exercise is not going to be meaningful i wanted to uh, see that how are we coming up with this exercise that you would you like to all do it yes no you can uh, do your thumbs up if you don't want to otherwise i can go move forward yeah. let's do it let's do it let's do okay. it well, I just came back from a long day, so I do but not. But this is a fun activity. Yeah, I'm no, I'm. I, I have. Uh, I have a, a shyness issue. Actually, I don't oh, like okay. to be uh, on camera, not on Zoom anywhere. No, no, really. have... Sorry, that's my sanskara I have to work with, but not at the moment. I'm sorry. That's fine. No, thank you. Again, 
this is open space safe space if you feel open for it you do it if you don't it's fine so fold the paper in half and then again in half and you don't even have to come on the camera but if you would have come on the camera you would see comparatively that what you understood the same it was because this exercise was meant for you to see that how we all receive the message differently active listening okay right? so fold the paper in half and then in half and then you fold the paper in and then open it to see the four squares created by this crease now draw a circle to fill the upper left hand square and draw a capital letter a so that it touches the circle on the up on the top and the bottom i am again repeating draw a circle to fill the upper left hand square and draw a capital letter a so that it touches the circle on the top and the bottom and draw a line horizontally through the middle of the circle thank you anthony for your physical presence <laughs> okay can you share, would you like to share with the group what you draw okay anyone else anyone else did this exercise thank you anthony anyone else so that we can compare i would love if somebody would have done this and would like to share so that we can compare okay no problem but anthony because we don't have any comparison i assume that you got the message clean and clear <laughs> and thank, thank you, you for that <laughs> so so we have to and the uh, and the next point is choosing the right method you know this is some of the sources i have uh, i have gathered and this is like uh, how it is important like what is the impact of written communication and what is the impact of verbal communication you know certain times we do <clears throat> what we do what we have to do is we have to understand that which message should be conveyed how so choosing the right method so use a verbal communication when when you are conveying emotions and feeling you text if you have made a mistake and you text or if you are angry and you text or if you are trying to convey one important message which is so elaborative and you text sorry it's not being a right way of choosing the communication then the message which does not need to be permanent that can be in the verbal communication you know certain things we do not like to put it on the paper we just want to pick up the call and we can say because it's not like we want it to be documented certain things which you don't want to document it and especially when we are into the uh, corporate uh, corporate setup and all so we talk many a time whenever there is a difficult like nowadays i am asking uh, i am asking for a lot of time off so my boss said rishali let's set up a time for a meeting and then we talk i said what is there to talk i am telling you i want a time off just give a time off no why why you want to talk but no he doesn't want to write anything he wants to talk you understand people choose different method to convey different messages through different means 
now when there is a time urgency <clears throat> like that's what we do right nowadays it's so much whatsapp in in whatsapp we think that i have that's what happens i text it and i assume because even though i go in info and i see that person has read the text but sometimes even if you touch the message it goes that it is read but not necessarily it is read and you think that that message has been conveyed and we assume and presume that i am going to get the result no no that's not the right way if when we have a, something urgent pick up the call and say this is what we want to do let's do it so time of urgency is the best way you have to choose verbal communication and then when you need a immediate feedback <clears throat> that time also verbal communication is the best way to communicate and when the ideas are simple or can be simple with explanation so certain ideas you know when we write something and recently that's what happened that i assume that my ideas were conveyed uh like the way i wanted to convey and i assumed it and i was sitting for 10 days and i assumed that that all the people whoever i have emailed they got my idea but that wasn't the case and what miss what was my learning lesson is i should have called and explain the idea so that it would be the better option than writing a long email and assume that they have read and understood the, exactly the same way what i wanted to convey so this is one of the things you know some of the tips which we want to learn that where what how we want to communicate now for the written communication skill we convey the facts when we want to convey the facts you have to write it and um, in my career what happened that one of my supervisor and i never had this experience in my uh, in my like when i was working in india because this doesn't happen there so one of my uh, supervisor was a like you know he was from a different race and he was kind of a partial and i that's what i observed that he is very partial and discriminative for his race and for me like you know we we say that okay because they are same language they are from same culture so they get along well and so he's then what happens gradually he started giving a silent treatments and like you know he would greet to the person who belongs to their race nicely but he would ignore me and i thought it is okay it is okay but then one because one of my friends she was in the hr and i was sharing with her and she said you know vishali this is called discrimination i said what is that because i had i had no idea about all this term he said he cannot do this as a supervisor he should be like this and like this and then he said now whenever you observe you have to write it down at this day this thing happened at this day this thing happened so then i never did this kind of a documentation but each and every moment whatever you communicate how did you feel what did he say to you and then i started communicate so that thing before i did not know but when i was being educated i started documenting it so when to document it when you want to convey the facts otherwise you say oh he said that and he said that he said no that doesn't work at this particular day this happened and this happened so conveying the fact this is new for me so i'm just sharing my story maybe you all know this but the message needs to be become a part of a permanent file they want to document it and eventually i filed a log i filed a, a legal complaint and eventually because of my documentation and proof that individual was that they he they was he was fired he was put on the leave of absence so what happens that when we know that this has to the action has to be happened then those things has to be written or communicated then there is a time urgency little time urgency or you do not wait you know it's okay if you want to take your own time it's okay for a couple of days that's fine no then it's okay fine then you can do written communication and if the ideas are very complicated then you have to write in detail step by step so that time written communication is helpful so this is some of the ideas i am not saying to do or not to do this is just some ideas what i am sharing with you 
So <clears throat> now we have some statistics that uh, information channel through which you are, so if what method I'm using for the communication and information richness. So face-to-face -face conversation has a high richness in the communication. Then video conferencing is also high richness. And this is what it says, the telephone con con conversation has a high, email is medium, handheld devices is medium, blogs have medium, written letters and memos have a medium impact and formal written uh, documents and spreadsheets have very low information richness because people don't like to go through all that. People want it to be presented in a certain way. So this is one of uh, some of the statistics I have to share with you. And now last, but very important is self-awareness. Self-awareness is the ability to see yourself clearly, objectively, through the reflection and the introspection. Self-awareness is based on the idea that you are not your thoughts, but the entity who is observing your thought. You are a thinker who is a separate and apart from your thought. And here we let's understand a different way of looking at this word definition of self is self eternal light form i am a self eternal light form so i am when i know myself the clarity comes from knowing yourself knowing yourself so well that whoever whatever way of communication I am receiving from externally. But if I know myself, it really brings strength within me. And then again, because I am connected with myself so well, there are certain power emerges. And that only emerges when I go again in that self-awareness, we had that introspection and reflection. And this introspection and reflection process happens in the process of meditation. <clears throat> what meditation does, it separates us out from what doesn't belong to me. In the whole day, <clears throat> excuse me, in the whole day, we are, we come across so many times this and we get entangled in these two words, I and my, I and my, I and my. And this I and my get us, they just grab us. And it, and in that, I lose my self-awareness. And when I lose my self-awareness, that's when my pure intention, my pure thoughts are mixed up with my other feeling which we call as the feeling of anger, jealousy, comparison, sorrow, past memories, past feelings, past impressions. You know, we carry so much big baggage of our belief system. So we, we just get so much overwhelmed. Then how am I going to come out of it and get a clear vision of myself. And that's why meditation practice is so important. And people say that you have to meditate early in the morning. But in Brahma Kumaris, in Raj Yoga, we really recommend to end your day with this clarity, reflection on the self, and go into the mode of silence before you want to go to sleep. And that's why we offer also from 8 to 8.30 meditation. End your day with more clarity. When I end my day, what happens? I reconcile. I reanalyze. And I, I, I get an opportunity to rebuild myself for tomorrow if I do that homework tonight. 
So tonight I have to separate myself from all the communication or miscommunication or feeling which we, I, it has been, I have come across and witnessed in today's day. And I wrap it up and analyze, take the good out of it, live, rest. Because what gives me clarity is seeing myself in the, my clear, <clears throat> clear light. So within me, we all know we are energy. We know we are power. We say, no, I am powerful. I am powerful. When I say this word, I am powerful, it means what? I have power. And what is power? Power is resemble with the light. And when I have a light, and so many ways we can transform this life. You know, we have lighter. We have uh, we we use also uh, fire. What you call it? Um, what do you call it? Sorry. Now you have to help this girl with the proper word. Uh, Barbecue. In barbecue also, we have a different way of uh, creating a fire, uh, a fire. Then we have a stove, right? Then we have a lamp. There are all different types of light. But eventually what it helps, it helps us to see the things clearly. Turn the things and change the form. So that's what I am light. I am light who can change the form who can change their own thoughts, who can change their own intention because everything happens, things transforms in the light. And that's why being a light, soul is a light, energy is a light. It means I am aware that I have a power of transformation. My light has a power of transformation. So when I have a power of transformation, it means indirectly I know I am self-sovereign, and that is what is Raja Yoga. Self-sovereignty comes in the light, because in the light, we see the things clearly, and we can transform the things the way we want. And that's what is the process happens in the flow of meditation. In meditation, first we go within, see yourself clearly, clearly, do not see a communicator, me, how the people, you know, I, this is what has helped me. And that's what I wanted to share with you. I never saw myself how people will look at me if I am going to communicate like this, if my English is not good, if I am not doing this. I have went into the, the uh, council meeting. I have communicated in front of like thousands of people and in public knowing that my English is not perfect, 100%, that's fine. But what I know is my intention and my clarity will be communicated through my thoughts, my feeling, my intention, and my vibration. We do not have to work on the words only. Words are important, but it's even if sometimes I use wrong words people say i i know what you mean so people know what you mean right i mean not... your english is very good actually <laughs> yeah but no, now <laughs> now sister elizabeth still corrects me and like yeah my you know but still i'm saying that if i would have that block that you know brother anthony shared if would, I would have that fear, and this is what helps in Raj Yoga. It, uh, it gives you the power, it gives you the light where you break your own prison, which you create within yourself. That I'm not good enough. I'm not able to do this. What if this person is going to think like this? What is it? You know, this kind of a thing, that self-critic, that self-sabotaging, uh, self-talk, that's what kills a better communicator, you know? We should, <clears throat> first thing is the self-awareness bring is a self-respect. I have to respect and I have to understand that, you know, that if I am clear 
I think so. I can really convey my message clearly. And that is a good teacher. Good teacher is first who first have their own clarity. What they are saying and what they are conveying. Do they have conceptually and uh, intentionally and uh, materially every way? Uh, do I have clarity of my subject line? And once my subject is clear to myself, it can be conveyed to anybody whatever way they are going to get it. I did not have problem with that so far. So that's what is my confidence said that no, I think so. Somewhere here and there mistake, it's okay. It's okay. We are all on the path of learning and growing and we have to give that you know benefit of doubt and we have to be compassionate. So, so that is very, very important that, you know, in communication, we have to be compassionate to the self and to the others. You know, that empathy. We should come from the place of that empathy. And for the self too, it's not like, you know, you don't have to better for yourself. Like we are, we are here in, on the journey. And in the journey, uh, we learn and we grow. So thank you so much. I would end this session today with my meditation i would like to unless you have any comments or questions i would love to take any or if you would like to give uh, me uh, my what you call evaluation i would be happy to have my evaluation <laughs> because that self evaluation because this is like communication with impact it should be evaluated well so you mean feedback feedback yes <laughs> <laughs> Any feedback, anything would like to share? Otherwise we can go into that experience of introspection and reflection, and we can practice what we have learned today. I step back and for a few minutes, I let myself free from all the activities and bring my awareness to the present moment. I sit relax. And I observe my inner being. For half a minute, let me go into the deep stillness. and calmness and while I am doing this I observe Few thoughts are coming on the surface. They are like a waves. And I just do not interrupt. Your thoughts may wander. 
thoughts from the past or future, let them go. Try not to analyze or sort out. Instead, focus on the spaces between the thoughts. and find the stillness and peace that is there. And now silently Say these things to yourself. I notice many thoughts and feelings arising in my mind. But I turn these thoughts away and focus on the thoughts of peace. Gradually, my thoughts begins to slow down. And I sense that within me, there is a peace. And I see myself I am a peaceful being. I am peaceful being. As I create this simple thought, then the feeling arises and I am drawn towards that feeling of peace. I am drawn to myself peaceful state of being it attracts me. Even though my thoughts may come to distract me, I acknowledge them I am aware of what they may be telling me about myself I accept them but I don't dwell on them 
I am not my thoughts. I allow them to come. I observe the feeling that they are bringing. But again, I bring myself back to myself and say, I am peaceful being. I am peaceful being. And as I do this, my thoughts begins to slow down. Experience a state of rest and stillness. And calmness within my mind. As I become absorbed in this experience of peace, I realize I am peace. And I just enjoy being in the state of peace. I absorb this peace in each and every cell of my body. I see my vision is clear. And I'm coming from the place of clarity about myself. I focus on this one thought, I am peace. Now in your own time, bring your self-awareness back into your room. Gently move your hands and feet. Open your eyes and observe the energy and vibration you are experiencing right now. Mm -hmm. 
for joining. See you sometime in future. Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you so much. Many blessings. Thank you.